Cellular respiration sounds like probably the most boring thing that I could possibly talk about. But when you're experimenting with yourself and you're trying to figure out ways to get more energy and ways to use proper supplementation to achieve new things, it becomes really fascinating. So we're gonna take a little biochemistry trip here. And I know it's gonna be complicated in some ways, but I promise I do a good job at making it fairly concise and making it fun. So we'll have some analogies, we'll have some pictures painted, and it's going to be a nice picturesque trip down cellular respiration lane and how you can potentially improve your energy. Let's go ahead and let's dive in. So this whole story is going to be a picture painted about what is called nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, NAD. Here on out, referred to as NAD. NAD is an energy source, okay? It's an energy carrier, rather, and it is critical. It is in every cell within our body, and if we did not have it, we would be dead within 30 seconds. It is that critical. It carries energy from all the food that we eat, from whatever energy source we're using, it creates the, or it carries the electricity so that we can use it. Now I'm doing this video because I started personally experimenting with taking some things that are precursors to NAD. So some of this is my own experience, okay? I started taking nicotinamide mononucleotide, which we'll talk about in a second. There's a brand that I recommend that I'll put a link down below as well. That brand is called Verso. They're super, super unique. I'll talk a little bit more about them later in this video. They're really unique in the sense that they've utilized nicotinamide mononucleotide along with what's called transresveratrol, which has some sort of synergistic components for helping out uh, what are called sirtuin activation and everything like that. So there's a link down below special for people that are watching this video or that are followers of my channel. So NAD is an electron carrier and I'll explain what exactly that means. If you were to consume a carbohydrate right now, that carbohydrate would of course go through digestion and it would break down and you would have glucose, okay? And that glucose enters a cell and it enters a specific area of the cell called the cytosol, okay? The cytosol is where some various processes happen specifically with glucose, right? So what happens is that glucose gets broken down more and more and more and more into something called pyruvate. Are you remembering sophomore biology class right now? Probably hated pyruvate, right? Well, let's make it a little more fun. Pyruvate then goes into the energy powerhouse, the mitochondria, and ultimately creates energy. But that is so unbelievably abbreviated. Let's talk about how the electricity part actually works and where this whole NAD thing comes into play. So NAD, as I mentioned before, lives inside of our cell. So the glucose comes in and it gets broken down. Well, while it's getting broken down, it loses two electrons. So what the heck does that mean? Well, all the food that we eat is charged electrically, positively, negatively, it's charged, right? So when we consume food, some of those charges get broken off through the processing, through the metabolism. It's the electricity from the food that is actually giving us energy at the end of the day. And it'll all make sense in a second as we take this trip. So what happens is the electrons get donated or get broken off from the actual breakdown of the glucose. But what happens is they bind to the NAD, that NAD that's living inside of our cell. And when they bind to that NAD, they become NADH, NAD plus hydrogen, okay? So what happens now is now that it's NADH, it's the job of the NADH to carry that electron into the power plant, into the uh, mitochondria where we create energy. So yes, electricity is getting carried and ultimately going to create energy. But it gets really wacky. Now, if you know my channel, you know that I'm always talking about fasting and keto and this and that and annoy the heck out of you, right? Well, here's where things are kind of wild. So remember how when glucose is metabolized, it gets broken down and it donates or gets rid of those electrons rather, right? Turns out that fatty acids, when we use fat for fuel or when we use ketones for fuel, they don't get broken down in the cytosol. They go directly to the mitochondria. So they don't have to go through this breakdown phase. So why is that important? Well, have you ever heard people talk about how fasting could potentially be uh, good for longevity? Well, this is why, okay? So when you metabolize glucose, some of your NAD has to be taken up to carry the electrons that are a byproduct of the glucose metabolism. Okay, okay, but when you're metabolizing fat, that doesn't happen because the NAD doesn't have to get used because whoop, 
the fat's going right through the cytosol, right into the mitochondria, bypassing the NAD. So the NAD is like, whoa, what happened? I didn't have to use anything. Well, it turns out that NAD is also critical for the function of what are called sirtuins. Now, a slight departure from the energy metabolism conversation, but it plays a huge role, and it's one of the reasons why I started to take NMN and NR, which I'll talk about. It's one of the reasons I started messing around the supplementation was for this reason. So when I have more NAD available, because I'm not using it with carbohydrate metabolism, that means I have more NAD available to assist in prolongevity genes sirtuins. The sirtuins are playing a role in making sure that our body is healthy and goes through these different longevity processes. But without NAD, they can't function right. Well, if NAD is constantly being occupied by glucose or by food, then where does the NAD get a chance to actually help the sirtuins and the longevity genes? That's why fasting, you're not eating, so the NAD isn't getting zapped up and it has more time, it's less distracted, and it can go and it can assist to the longevity genes and that whole piece. That's a slight departure. But anyway, that's kind of how I started taking this as a supplement, right? That's how I started messing around with it. But now let's move on to what's called the electron transport chain, which is where things seemingly get advanced, and it is, but I think I can make it kind of fun, right? So now we're in the mitochondria. Envision the cell as a town. Okay, so the cell is a town and it's uh, in the center of the town, you've got a mitochondria, which is the power plant. So think of it like, kind of like uh, what is it, Springfield, like the Simpsons, right? You've got their little funky town and then you've got the nuclear power plant. That's what it is, cell, the power plant. Mitochondria is the power plant. So pyruvate, which is that glucose that we ate that's broken down, now enters into the mitochondria and it gets broken down into acetyl coenzyme A. Okay, not that important right at the moment. Fats and ketones enter the mitochondria and also get broken down at, into acetyl coenzyme A. So no matter what fuel you're using, it gets broken down into acetyl coenzyme A. But through this breakdown, what's happening? More electrons, right? Because we're breaking things down. Each time we break things down more and more, we have electrons that release. That's oxidative stress right there. The process of breaking down food, the process of breaking things down creates electrons. And sometimes electrons escape and go crazy throughout the body and cause oxidative stress, oxidative damage. That's a story for a different day. But anyhow, so now we're left with acetyl coenzyme A, but we're also left with a bunch more NADH. So more of that NAD plus or the NAD, right, is now taking on electrons becoming NADH. Well, how do we create energy from that? This is where it's so intriguing. I hope you're still with me because I know it's complicated, but it's cool. The NADH now releases the electrons or it releases its hydrogen. And it does so through a very unique pathway of slowly dropping down, a, dropping down these complexes, they're called, and releasing hydrogen. So envision this, here's an analogy. If I were to fall off of uh, the Sears Tower right now, boom. When I hit the ground, I would make a pretty big energy impact. But I want you to imagine me falling off the Sears Tower and just going from floor to floor. Boom, 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 boom. The overall energy impact is probably going to be about the same overall in the aggregate, but it's not going to happen all at once. I'm falling from floor to floor. Well, this is how it works with the electron transport chain. The NADH now has carried the electron from the food that we eat, the, the electrons, and it drops them down in phases. So first the electron falls to one complex, boom. And when it does, it releases a bunch of hydrogen, a little pump of hydrogen. And then it falls down another one, boom. And it releases another pump of hydrogen. Then it falls down another one and it releases another pump of hydrogen. Till eventually inside the mitochondria, you have a chamber that has just a bunch of compressed hydrogen. So this whole process of dropping an electron, of dropping this thing, is releasing hydrogen. So what happens now? Well, this is where the analogy gets super cool. You now have one area that has a lot of concentration of hydrogen and one area that does not. Well, as a natural result, the hydrogen is going to want to flow into an area that doesn't have as much hydrogen. It's like an isotonic state. It's like if you were to fill a water balloon with salt water and another water balloon with water and magically connect them, the one with the water, it's gonna draw into one or the other, right? So this, because there's a gradient there, because there's less hydrogen on one side than the other, 
a lot of the hydrogen from this side wants to flush into the other side really rapidly. But when it does so, it passes through something called ATP synthase. Guess what that is? That's a little windmill-like thing. It's a water turbine. It's a turbine. And the hydrogen passes through that turbine to go to the other chamber. And when it does, it, it spins that turbine. And this is how we create energy. Now, there's another process we could talk about with you know, phosphate, ATP, ADP, all that, but I'm gonna keep it simple. Basically, the electrons fall down, boom, 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 create hydrogen on one side, then the hydrogen passes through and spins a turbine that creates energy. So without the NAD to carry the electron, there is no bus to carry that electrical energy that ultimately creates and ultimately spins the turbine. It is a very important thing to the point where, like I said, if we do not have NAD, we die in 30 seconds. It's so critical to every cell. So where does it come in with potentially potential supplementation? The one that I've been experimenting with is a product called Verso, which I highly recommend that you do check out. I put a link down below. You know, if you want to just dive into the biochemistry, that's all good. But I would be honest and talk about the one that I'm utilizing. So the whole purpose of utilizing something like NMN in this case is that you're helping your body have the precursors to the NAD. Okay. Now, by helping your body potentially create more NAD, you are allowing your body to have more NAD available for other things, whether it's energy or whether it potentially is to assist the sirtuins. Now, I'm not making any claim, okay? There's a lot of evidence out there surrounding something called nicotinamide riboside, okay? And that's commonly used in a lot of research settings and a lot of longevity settings. But NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide, is slightly different, slightly different molecule. And there's some really compelling evidence that's starting to show that it could be used just as well, if not even better than nicotinamide riboside. So if you're in that world, you know what I'm talking about, okay? So this is why it's so important that we focus on ways to enrich our NAD levels within our body. And this is exactly the reason why fasting and exactly the reason why periods of caloric deprivation are so powerful. You're taking a break from zapping all your NAD. Now, again, you can go the avenue of potentially supplementing and being able to add NAD through various mechanisms but you can also calorically restrict and preserve some of the NAD. So if NAD potentially declines as we age, then it would make sense that the more that we calorically restrict and do fasting and things like that, the more potential NAD we preserve, leaving it available for A, energy, but B, potential longevity genes and sirtuin activation or sirtuin assistance, I should say, okay? so. Anyhow, it's a wild, wild world, but understanding cellular respiration and understanding bioenergetics is sort of the key to being able to, I don't wanna say unlock energy, but it's the key to being able to understand what your food does within your body. Because it's not just as simple as I eat food, food give me energy. It's way more complicated than that. And if we know the inner workings, we can make a lot happen. So anyhow, big thanks for watching this video. I know it was long-winded. Again, my recommended nicotinamide mononucleotide is down below. It's called Verso and it's also paired with resveratrol, transresveratrol, which plays a role in helping it work with the sirtuins a little bit more. I should probably do a separate video on that directly, but still very interesting stuff. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.